Hey guys, we are finishing up the book today. We're on chapter 84, The New Mother, and I'm very excited to see how this all ends. Brightbull was there when his mother smashed against the pavement. He watched her body parts as they were loaded into an airship. He followed the ship all the way back to the robot factory and perched himself up on the roof, but he didn't know what to do next. Strutter stopped by to check on Brightbill. She encouraged him to fly home, but the goose wasn't ready to let go. His little heart still hoped his mother would come back from the dead somehow. He'd seen it happen before. As the hours passed, however, his hope was starting to fade. And then one of the roof windows automatically slid open. The goose heard gentle music coming from inside the building. He fluttered through the window and followed the music down a hallway to a wooden door. The door opened and the goose stepped in. Brightbill waddled past tall bookshelves and leather furniture and into the middle of a large room. An old woman was sitting in a chair and a robot was standing by a mirror. The goose didn't recognize either of them and when the robot rushed towards him, Brightbill squawked, stay back, and he scrambled away. Around the room, he went squawking and flapping until he settled onto a table in a corner, looking lost and afraid. The robot stayed where she was. Bright Bill, it is me, your mother. The goose just stared. I know I look different on the outside, the robot went on, but on the inside, I am the same. I still speak the language of the animals, and I still remember every detail of our life. I remember sitting around the fire in our home on the island. I remember the first time you took flight. We were up on a greasy ridge and you stretched out your wings and suddenly you were floating on the wind. But then you flopped back into the grass. You must have flopped back into the grass a hundred times that day. And I remember visiting the robot gravesite together. We talked about life and death. It was tough conversation, but a good one. As the robot continued to speak, the goose began to relax. She certainly did act and sound like his mother, but Brightbill wasn't yet convinced. If you're really my mother, he said, tell me the name of our home. The nest. Who's my best friend? chit chat she is a squirrel she talks a lot <laughs> how old was i when you adopted me you were zero actually you were less than zero i mean you were still an egg but i could hear you peeping and with those bumbling words bright bill knew the truth oh mama it's really you the goose fluttered across the room and into his mother's arms the arms were new and unfamiliar but they were also gentle and comforting I love you, Mama. I love you, son. From the other side of the room came the sound of sniffles. Our friends turned and saw Dr. Mal Malavo wiping tears from her eyes. I have no idea what you two were saying, she said, but that was beautiful. Chapter 85, The Guests. After traveling in secret, after running in fear, our friends were safe at last, but their problems weren't over yet. Although Roz had a brand new body, she still had the same old mind, and most humans were simply weren't ready for an emotional, curious, wild robot. There was only one place where she could be her true self, and it was still far, far away. Dr. Malavo, you have already been so kind to me and my son, said the robot, but I must ask you for one last favor. The woman sat back in her chair. Could you take us home in your airship? The woman laughed. Well, of course I will. How else would you get to an island in the middle of an ocean? Time and time again, Roz had dreamed of flying back to her island in an airship, but she had never thought it would actually happen until now. It's no trouble, the woman went on. We can have you home in a few hours, but I insist that you and Brightbill stay a while here in my apartment. You both deserve some peace and comfort, and I would love the company. There was no arguing with Dr. Malavo, and our friends agreed to stay a while. The robot butler took care of everything and everyone in the apartment, and that included guests. 
Roz felt funny accepting help from a robot, but Bright Bill happily soaked up the attention. The butler fed him fantastic salads made from exotic leafy plants. The butler placed a little pool in the living room so that he could swim whenever he liked. And the butler built a cozy bed that was just the right size and shape for the young goose. Bright Bill had never been so comfortable. Dr. Malovo divided her time between her guests and her work. She would sit around chatting with Roz and Bright Bill and then suddenly head down to the factory for some urgent task. She had to design new robots, she had to supervise the makers of the Recos, and she had to manage all the tech lab industries. Even at her old age, Dr. Malovo was still consumed by a passion of her robots. If you love your job, it feels like work, she said smiling and strolling out the door. When the host was working, the guests had the apartment to themselves. Roz spent hours browsing the bookshelves. She read about art and science and the history of robots. Bright Bill waddled from room to room and explored every corner of the sprawling apartment. Let me show you them there in the apartment. There's little Bright Bill in his pool. And Roz looking at that library. But their favorite activity was to stand by the windows, gaze across the city, and survey the incredible sights. I can see the bridge where Strutter tracked me down, said Bright Bill. Oh, and that's the building where I first met Greybeak. And there's a roof the, where you fell. Look far in the distance, another spaceship is taking off, said Roz. It could be flying to the space station or moon or beyond. I think that skyscraper is actually a greenhouse, said Bright Bill. I flew past it and saw nothing but plants inside. Roz and Bright Bill enjoyed their time in Dr. Malavo's apartment, but they missed their friends in the wilderness and the island. And after a few days, the guests were growing restless and they were ready to go home. Chapter 86, The Flight. Sitting on the pavement, glinting in the sun, was a sleek white airship. For so long, those white ships had filled the robot with dread. Now one was about to solve all of her problems. The door hummed open and Dr. Malovo, Roz, and Brightville climbed aboard. Once they were comfortable, the woman spoke to the airship. Take us to the island where Rosum Unit 7134 was found. The engines fired up and the ship lifted off. It floated high into the air and it turned to the north and then started cruising above the city. The three of them quietly watched the buildings and streets pass below. The city seemed to go on forever, but as they flew faster and further, it slowly gave way to towns and countryside. They crossed the hard edge of the coastline, and then there was only the ocean and the sky and the airship. The ocean was deep. However, scattered throughout the dark depths were shallow areas, sandbars, reefs, islands, just under the waves. In places, bizarre rock formations stuck up from the shallows. Or were they the ruins of old buildings? The mysterious shapes faded behind the airship and were replaced by more dark depths. The ship flew on and the hours flew by. Gradually, fluffy clouds came into view on the edge of the horizon. Beneath the clouds was a faint smudge of green. The island! It grew closer and bigger, and then Roz was gazing out at all the places she had missed. <gasps> the rocky shore, the mountain and the waterfall, the forest and meadows and ponds. Air blasted towards the ground as the ship lowered itself into a grassy clearing. It gently touched down and the engines powered off. Here's a picture of all three of them on the airship. Chapter 87, The Homecoming. The airship's door hummed open and our robot stepped outside. Everything was still and silent, but Roz knew hidden animals were watching and she greeted them with a mighty roar. Animals of the island, I have returned. I may look different, but I promise you I am your old friend Roz. Her words boomed across the island, but the only response was her own voice echoing back. The wild robot needed to be wilder. 
So she reached down and started smearing handfuls of mud across her body. Then she pressed clumps of weeds and flowers into her muddy coating until she looked more like her old wild self. Brightville fluttered out from the airship and perched on Roz's shoulder. He shook his tail feathers and he squawked. It's true. This robot's my mother. Come see for yourselves. Silence. And then bushes began to rustle. Faces began poking out from trees. Animals began scurrying and trotting and flying into the meadow. At first they moved cautiously, confused as to how this new robot could be their old friend. But they saw her wild appearance and they heard her wild voice and news began spreading across the island. Roz was back. A crowd of friendly creatures gathered around our robot. There was Brightbill's flock and the beaver and the deer families and Fink the fox and Swooper the owl. Bears came lumbering down from the hills and the fish jumped up from the ponds and vultures circled above. Even the nocturnal creature creatures crawled out from their burrows into daylight to join the celebration. Oh, how good it feels to return from a long journey and find your friends and family waiting for you. But reader, sometimes we will return to find things that they aren't exactly as we left them. As you know, the wilderness can be harsh, a harsh place. And while Roz was away, it had claimed its share of her friends. The robot saw the raccoons, Lumpkin and Bumpkin, but not Rumpkin. Nor did she see Broadfoot the moose or dig down the groundhog. Other creatures were missing as well. And so like many of our homecomings, this one was bittersweet. Chit Chat this girl came bounding through the grass, chattering on as usual. <gasps> I always knew you'd come back to us, Ross, but I never imagined you'd gain so much weight. Although I guess I've gained a little weight myself. Anyway, you'll have to tell me all about your adventures when you get a chance. I'm sorry for talking so much. I'm just so excited to see you again geese and beavers and deer and fish and squirrels and owls and bears and turtles and otters and raccoons and woodpeckers and possums and moose and foxes and every kind of creature from every corner of the island were coming to welcome back their dear friend Ross and Brightbill and watching it all from the airship was Dr. Malavo. Chapter 88 The Final Farewell Everyone, I would like you to meet the woman who designed me. Roz walked over to, to the strange creature standing by the ship's doorway. For most of the island animals, this was their first time seeing a human. They squinted and sniffed and whispered to each other, trying to understand how such a frail old woman could create such a big, strong robot. Dr. Malavo started speaking softly to Roz, and then Roz started speaking loudly to the animals. My designer has asked me to translate her words to you, said the robot. The following words are not mine, they are hers. And the crowd settled down and listened. Thank you, animals, for saving Graz. Without your help, she would have died here long ago. But you were not only her rescuers, you were also her teachers. You taught her to be wild, and she needed all of her wilderness to survive, both in your world and in mine. As I look around this wild paradise, I finally understand why Roz, Roz tried so hard to get back here. She does not belong with robots and humans. She belongs here on this island with all of you. We cannot risk others learning about this place. That is why I will soon leave and never return. But I promise to keep your island a secret so that all of you can live in peace. And I will spend the rest of my days filled with wonder at the miracle that is our wild robot. The meadow fell silent. A flurry of wing beats and Brightville landed on the grass near Dr. Malavo. He gazed up at the woman deep into her eyes and then he bowed his head. Then the other geese in their flock bowed their heads. Crown Point the buck bowed his head. Pink Tail the possum bowed. Mr. and Mrs. Beaver bowed. The lizards bowed, followed by the turtles and frogs. Like a wave rolling through the crowd, more animals bowed until every head was lowered. They were showing respect for the woman who'd, who had created their dear friend Roz and who had brought her back to them. Dr. Malavo turned to Roz. Do you understand why 
I can't return, she said, her eyes glistening. It's for your own good. I understand, said the robot. I only wish we had gotten to know each other a little better. Dr. Malavo smiled and put Ra pulled Roz into a hug. She didn't mind the robot's coat of mud and grass. Wrapped in each other's arms, they both felt something like love. You're the wild robot, said the woman. Go be wild. Chapter 89, The Departure. Dr. Malavo stepped on board her airship and the door hummed closed. A moment later, the engines fired up and the crowd of wild creatures backed away. And then the ship rose above the island, turned to the south and disappeared into the sky. So there she is flying away. Chapter 90, The Island. Our story ends on an island where a robot was returning to her wild way of life. Roz had escaped from the world of humans and now she was free to be her true self again. She could think and speak and do whatever she desired and right now what she desired was to simply watch the sunset. With Bright Bill on her shoulder, Roz hiked past trees and meadows and streams and climbed up, up, up the mountain to the very highest point of the island. And then our friends sat on the slanted rocks of a peak and watched the sun slowly sink behind the ocean. If you're like me, reader, you still have a lot of questions. How long will Roz live? Will she ever see another human or another robot? What joys and sorrows lied ahead for her? Ross still had some questions too, but now she also had some answers. Our robot knew where she came from. She knew the life that she was supposed to live, and she knew the life she wanted to live. As Roz sat with Bright Bill, she slowly turned her head, scanning the island, taking it all in. The last rays of sunlight streaked across the treetops below. Animals scurried through the shadows and the air was fresh with the scent of flowers and salt water. The sky began darkening, the crickets began chirping, and the stars began twinkling. Everything was just right. Roz felt safe and happy and loved. The wild robot was home. And there's a picture of them together at home. Oh, what a great ending the epilogue. Autumn had returned to Hilltop Farm. The pasture was coated with frost, but the cows were out there grazing on the last few tufts of fresh grass. Soon they'd stroll up to the parlor for another milking. Their routine never changed. Mr. Sarif was sitting in his pickup truck with his dog. The man stared out the window across the fields at the new robot. He was keeping a close eye on her. Tech Lab had promised him that this one wouldn't run away, but he didn't trust her yet. These days, the children spent most of their free time working on the farm. Jaya had a way with the cows, and Jad liked the tools and the machines. They were walking through the farm buildings together when they heard a honking sounds in the sky, and a flock of geese glided down to the pond. For weeks, geese had been stopping by on, on their migrations. But there was something different about this flock. They flew in a perfect formation and they were led by a small graceful goose. The flock calmly floated on the water and after a while the leader shook his tail feathers, beat his wings and fluttered over to Jaya and Jad. The goose stood in the front of the children and he gazed deep into their eyes. Then he craned his neck around, plucked one of his feathers and laid it on the ground at their feet. Jaya and Jad looked at each other and smiled. The children had been waiting for this moment. They'd always wanted to know how Roz's story would end. And now they finally knew their wild robot was back where she belonged. If you'll remember back, Roz told the children that whenever she made it back to the island safe, she would send Bright Bill back and he would give them a feather. And that would be the sign that, that they made it. So, wow, I just cannot believe we're done. I appreciate you guys coming um, day after day or week after week 
to read The Wild Robot Escapes with me. It was so much fun. Love this. Love, just want to say thank you again uh, to the author, Peter Brown, for giving us permission um, for me to read this out loud to you guys um, so that we could continue with our story. Guys, I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did. We'll have to see what um, book pops in my lap next that I want to read to you guys. Y'all have a great, beautiful, blessed day. See you next time.